Hey, is it gonna fit? Oh <laughs> no! I don't know how I'm gonna get. <laughs> oh, this is tricky. Hello, 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 or as they say in Holland, hello, hello. I like it. It's kind of like a mellow. Why am I talking Dutch? Uh, because <laughs> we are doing a video that I've wanted to do for so long, and I don't. Well, I do know why. I'll come to that in a minute. We're doing it. These are uh, Stroop waffles. Stroop actually converts to syrup, I believe, because I know Dutch. And the waffles are just waffles. These things are amazing. Oh, look at this. Oh, you disc of waffly, groovy stuff. Uh, originated in Holland, then these things, but now you pretty much go to a coffee shop all over the world and it's just literally by the tills, isn't it? They're just there. I'll just have the uh, Americano Latte Grande from Frappuccino Cotolata and then I'll take one of these uh, Stroop waffles, please. But the cool thing is with them, the syrup or the Stroop in the middle, Stroop is such a cool word. Stroop doggy dog, right? Uh, you put a hot mug of drink and you sit that on top and the steam uh, from the hot drink will actually warm the caramel. Boom, I've never done that. We will do that in a bit. I normally just eat them like this. It's still good like that. Now to make the Stroop waffles be waffly, uh, they've got a little groove on it and I had to buy something. Yes, I had to buy this thing, which is called a pastry roller, um, but it, it's not. The English on this thing is so bonkers anyway. Um, it's like 20 quid. I was willing to part with that amount to buy it online. There was an actual waffle making proper machine Stroop waffle thing, 300 pounds. For some reason, I found it so hard to get something that could hopefully make those shapes. I just need to show you the English on this box because I think I bought it from Shakespeare. Non-stick waffle makers should only need a light coating of cooking oil or cooking spray before thy first time they're used for thy day, not before each waffle is made. To stroop or not to stroop, that is the question. And this was what I went for. I um, took this out yesterday because it was just, polystyrene was bursting out the box when it arrived. And it's just basically a press. But uh, when you open it up, can you see this kind of like that honeycomb edge? And look how flat that is. That should help, hopefully, uh, help make the Stroop waffle effect thing. And it doesn't matter, we'll come on to this, it doesn't matter how big I make them, all right? There's, there's a few tools involved in Stroopin. But we are gonna batter up, boom! Because the first thing we need to do, which I really is astounded by, is make an actual dough with yeast and everything. I mean, just as a side note, I think we should have said the first thing we need to dough rather than do. Yeah. Grab yourself a big old mixing bowl. And here is some plain flour. Now actually, thinking about it, this recipe, it feels like you've been sort of flung everywhere. It starts off like a pastry. That's what we're gonna do in a minute. Then it kind of turns, turns, <laughs> turns into uh, like a, a, a dough, uh, because you're making the kneading with the dough and, the, and you've got to let it rise. Then it turns into a waffle, then it kind of ends up as a biscuit. It's like four recipes in one. Let's just contemplate that. Well, what I mean is, um, this is like the pastry making bit at the start. And thank you so much to everyone that suggested this gadget uh, that you can get online, which is like a pastry blender. I guess you could use a potato masher as well. Um, but this will help to work the butter into the flour. There we go. Take a look at that. Nice and smooth. Get it lump free, okay guys? Those are your fingers and thumbs. I feel for you. Add some sort of baking element into this. It's the yeast we could do. Cinnamon. So a little shake of that. Not too much, like about a teaspoon. And some sugar. Just mix it through. All the dry ingredients get to mingle together and go, hey, we are going to make some amazing Stroop Rufus. This is optional, but I'm just going to make a little well uh, and put the egg in there. I say the egg as if you know it's there already. This is one large egg. And you might be able to hear in the background the sound of my warm tap running. That is because the warm water is going to help activate the yeast and get it going. And there it is. That is some warm water. Oh yeah, not too hot, not too cold. Tepid. And we are going to whirl this all together. I just taking my ring off for this bit because some people don't like it when I need with the ring on or not. So, um, you yeah, know, it's up to you about that. I don't really mind. Plain flour, a little bit of plain flour because we need to knead. Shimmy it down. I'm not going to get too angry with you if you don't really work this too much because I've never done this before. <laughs> I just don't feel it's going to need as much kneading as like a homemade loaf of bread, you know? But I am going to use the flour to help dry it out on the outer edges and then we'll slowly just work it a little bit around just to kind of make a, ni a nice ball shape. There we go, so nothing too crazy. Just stick it back in my bowl like that. And now we're gonna wrap it with some Wrapmaster 3000. 
All right, so this is gonna get it airtight and just like dough with the yeast working away, it's gonna rise. So let's give it about 50 minutes, which gives me ample time to clean up this and we can also make the stroop. So to make the stroop caramel filling, you should be using a high raised saucepan. I'm using this because I wanna show you. I don't know why, it's gonna be a little bit more dangerous using a, a lower pan like this, but I just thought, hey, I wanna show you. What I'm gonna do is nestle a big old blob like an iceberg of 100 grams of butter right in there. We're gonna melt this together now. We're gonna go for a sexy out of focus shot. We're gonna grab our pan and bring it into focus, which is actually the opposite of what I normally do. Wow. Let's get a little bit of flame. Oh yeah. So all I'm doing is melting that up. And spoiler alert, that is not gonna take very long at all. <laughs> of course you should normally cube your butter, but I just fancied having that big old iceberg. Yeah, so it's nearly there now, and just a little spoiler, do not put your finger in that, not that you're planning to, but it is hotter than the sun, okay? And the actual texture of it now, it's a lot smoother. It was quite grainy before, very sugary, but now softened up. That is a really weird pose, mate, you're like a hunchback. So again, we're gonna add some cinnamon in. So we're gonna flavor this up, about a teaspoon again. Oh, straight in there. And some vanilla extract, oh yeah. And then some of you won't be able to get hold of this. This is golden syrup. Five good old squirts of that. All right, so everything is stirred through now. <laughs> I might have put a bit too much cinnamon in there because it does smell like Christmas in a pan, which I'm not unhappy about, it's all good. But because it's still on that low heat and it's warm, it's still very dangerous. And of course, there's this movement in it. So as it cools down, it will go firm, but that's exactly what I'll do. I'll take it off the heat now, and when we need to use it later, we'll warm it up. All right, so we got a little bit of time. So this is um, a coffee that I've just made. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh no. <laughs> it's not gonna fit. It, is it gonna fit? Oh <laughs> no. Oh, we used this mug the other day. Hang on. The biscuit pocket mug. I don't know how I'm gonna get. <laughs> uh, hey, it's enjoying itself in there though. Sinking. It is having a whale of a time in there. Oh, can you see the kink in it? It's bent. The syrup's definitely warmed up. <laughs> I bet that's gonna taste amazing. Oh, it's hot. Oh, that's good, it's soaked into the waffle as well. Mm. Right. Oh, gosh. It's still hot, that's all right. Okay, that's going on there. Do your thing. And I'll have a standard one there. We'll give it like two minutes and see if it does work, because I've never done it before. Exciting. But I'm not sure if it's just me, it does look like it's got a little bit of a bend again as well. If this works, this is revolutionary, you could warm your dinner up on a mug. So this is a standard one, cold. Oh, a bit tough, see? Not any pull in, no, like a cheese pull, no syrup pull. I don't know if we're gonna get that, but it's tough, it's hard. Okay, this one feels the same. Oh, it's, oh, you see, there it is. Oh, that's better than it being dunked in coffee. This is a thing I don't get. Because we're not done yet. So the crazy thing, look how thin these things are. Apparently we have to cook them in that press and then slice them horizontally through to get two waffles from one cook. Now, I don't know if it's just me that's just had their mind blown there from that fact, because I generally thought these are just two biscuits wedged together with syrup. Not all this complexity of making waffles and cutting them up. It's gonna be fun though. All right, so now comes the time where uh, we cook these things up. We're kind of gonna have to have like a, a station ready. So I've got a chopping board down here with my cookie cutter ready. We've got the press, which I'm gonna lubricate in a little bit of butter. In fact, I'll do that now. <laughs> Take the dough. And what we're gonna do, we will keep it covered as we do individual batches, but we'll probably get about 10 portions out of this. We're gonna roll it into a ball, press it down, which will flatten it, ideally bigger than this. We then cut it out because this will give it the honeycomb kind of groovy look, and this will give it the circular shape. Well, that will. You guys are probably wondering what I'm most worried about. What I'm most worried about is this thing, because when you buy the electric ones that I saw online, 300 quid odd ones, like the heat, it's like a sandwich toaster, right? It's gonna be consistent. So if you've got a panini press or something like that, you could probably get away with that. It's gonna be consistent heat. Whereas for me, it's gonna be hot one side with the hob. I'm gonna have to keep turning it. Um, so the color could be pretty unique. <laughs> and then we've got to slice it. All right, so with some slightly floured hands, I'm taking 
just, I don't know, what is that? Like a large meatball size, maybe a burger patty size. Just enough that I feel like once it's pressed down, it'll be as wide as that. So you might want to go bigger just for peace of mind, but I feel like this will be all right. But yeah, this is greased. Uh, so I think we can just test it. Let me just press it down. Just see. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's gone huge. <laughs> well, it's in there. I'm going to have to keep it in there. Let's cook it. Ooh, if I can get one right, yeah. Just one. Maybe the pan should have been warm, but it'll be warm for the next batch. It's going on here. I don't know how long to leave it on for. Oh, look. Oh, my gosh. What's it doing? I've got to take that off because the flame. Look, it's coming out. <laughs> I might have put a bit too much in there. We'll just um, cut away that bit of excess. Yes. Right, let's try it again. <laughs> oh, look. No, it's catching. See, look. It's burning my actual... Oh, I've got to be careful. I don't want to set fire. Uh, yeah, look. <laughs> just charred the outside it looks like a naan bread <laughs> problem i've got is i don't know how cooked the inside bit is oh no look it's nothing nothing what the hell is that smoking oh let's <laughs> charred it ah i know we'll cut that excess off as well we're just going a little bit unorthodox but remember this would all get cut off anyway oh look at that that looks amazing <laughs> how the hell have we done that the colour's a bit inconsistent though, just like what arrived on thy box. But maybe that's the selling point. Maybe you do want a little bit of uniqueness on there. I have literally just moved this cutter over here and the street waffle, had another check, and look at this. <sighs> huh? Get out. Oh, that side's a bit burnt. Oh no, that was a look at, oh, because I was talking to the camera, damn it. Ha, ha. But what you have to do whilst it's hot is you take your cutter and you... You kind of stamp it like that to get your circular shape. Oh, <laughs> come on. What? <laughs> what? I'm sorry, I'm using blunt cutters. Oh, there you go. But for a first attempt, considering all the problems we had, that, <laughs> it's got a bit of an extra ring on it. Beyonce, there is no way that I can slice that in half. Look at that. No way at all. As it's still warm, it'll be a little nimble. When it cools down, it'll be stronger. So I'll leave that and make another one. It tastes really good, but it's, <laughs> it's like cardboard. A little less dough this time. This is like a table tennis ball size. Well, maybe just slightly over. So we'll, we'll do it here again. We'll clamp it down. Oh my gosh, look, it's doing it again. It's doing it again. <laughs> well, we'll find the right time. No, the right shape. Now this is a lot better. So whilst this second one finishes off, I'm just wondering whether, you can see there's a clamp at the bottom here. I've been using that down, which has been pressing it almost flat. I might try just sitting the ball in there and just letting it lower naturally and seeing what happens. Maybe a little bit of force, but not to the level like that where it's completely flush. I mean, I'm having fun though. Oh, oh what's going on? Oh, there we go. Hey, whilst it's still warm, press, press. Oh, rolling pin optional, I suppose. It just feels like so much wastage, doesn't it? Look, Barry, can you make a giant street waffle, please? Look, there you go. It's, it's there. <laughs> what surprises me is, you know, like normal waffles aren't made with yeast or anything like that, and it doesn't seem to be doing anything. But that looks pretty cool. I'll give it that. <laughs> Yeah, different colours. One of them has been on holiday to Florida. The other one has been on holiday to, well, Western Supermare, where I live. But it will do. This time, I'm going to try that other option of literally grabbing the ball. Bear in mind, this is still fairly warm. And I'm going to just let it sit and rest and close naturally like that. Let's see what happens when we do this. So I'm putting no pressure on there whatsoever. I love how the syrup's just sat there in the corner going, uh, what the heck is going on? <laughs> I might be able to give it a little squeeze for a little bit of, you know, squishy on there. Oh, this could work. This could work. Oh, wow. Can you see how fat that is? <laughs> oh, I don't know. It's thin one end still. Mmm. Because the angle we're clamping it at, it's getting flat there and fat here. Ugh. Oh, the depth on that. But then you spin it round. <laughs> ah. Oh, so much easier to cut that. Well, I thought it was. <laughs> it felt like it, there you go. So you can see we've got a possible opportunity there to slice through that because it's wide enough. 
but then you'll get to the end here. Ah! So whilst that cools down, I'm gonna do one more, and this time, I'm just gonna give it a very initial push, and then we'll leave it. Right, yeah, so this time, I'm gonna let it literally just sit for a bit, let it do its natural thing. Lower, 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 lower. <gasps> I wonder what happens. I wonder what happens if I just fry it like that. Hmm. And it's just about big enough. Oh! <laughs> okay. It's, it's, it's a lot fatter. But it looks more burnt, actually. Whoops. <laughs> ah, whoops. There you go. This one is um, a little charred. But look at the... Ah! Look at the rise on that. That is like almost like a normal waffle. Ow. See, the other one that we made just a minute ago, you can see how if I slice that groove there, it could work. I'm going to make a few more. You don't need to see that. And then we'll finish these off. So here's just another option. If you don't want to invest in a pizzelle, I think that's what they're called. That's what I try to get hold of. And you don't want to invest in thy waffle press. I'm going to place down a ball of dough. This is an oven proof ramekin with some baking parchment on it so I can get it off. And I'm just going to press it down just to kind of form, I guess, the patty shape. So I can lift it off and press like this. <laughs> that is not too bad at all. Good puffage on it. Boom. <laughs> yeah, we'll let it cool. Okay, so I am done. That is your normal Stroop waffle. And my first batch that I did, which were way too thin, I am actually really, really happy with that, where I compressed it, that worked a charm. And the second batch where we kind of like got a bit more puffiness on it, I'm gonna slice that, which is what you're supposed to do. The other ones have varying degrees of success with temperatures of the pan. Do keep it lubricated on a low heat, but obviously you're not gonna get like your markings on there. You do get the width on it though. They are puffy, <laughs> almost like proper waffles. My actual preferred method is what I thought it was, how they were made, but having two thin ones and wedging it together with the syrup, but we will slice this. Oh, that doesn't want to slice at all. <laughs> this is tricky. Because <laughs> if I've done that bit, that's fine. When I make something, I don't want to be slicing it up when I've made something chunky. And look, because you kind of got like no cooked bit there. That can't be right, surely. Maybe it is. I never knew that. Because I feel like I want to cook that, do you know what I mean? Kids, do not try this at home without adult supervision. So I'm getting a good old spoonful of it. It will cool down pretty quick, that's the perk, but you don't <laughs> want to put any fingers near that. Okay, and very, very carefully here, I'm gonna sit that on top and just lightly push it to the edges. Look, this is my disappointing thing. It was burnt uh, or charred in uh, quotation marks, but nice that side. So we'll hide that bit. Maybe that's what these do in the factories. Uh, Nigel, that side's burnt. Just flip it over, will you, mate? Because that is how Dutch people speak. Actually, I think Holland is my fourth biggest audience. So hello, people in Holland. I want to head out there and say hello to you. Probably all queuing up to go, come to my house and I will teach you how to make these properly. But this one as well, these are the thin ones that I made. Very, very fragile before. But if I'm just put a little bit of pressure, see, we're just pushing it to the edge. All right, so I'm gonna actually leave these to cool and then we'll try the hot drink thing on them. While I'm waiting for those to cool down, you might remember last year I did something called the Mendip Challenge for charity. Uh, if you haven't seen the video, there is one of that. It's 30 miles up and down hills and the Mendip's really full on day of walking. It's so hard. We raised over £1,100 for charity. I've done it for six years in a row. Uh, this year, I'm going to be trying to run the majority of it or jog uh, the flats and the downhills and then walk the hills. Uh, it's going to be so hard. I've not trained very much for that at all, uh, but we will do it. And this video will be up on the Monday. So the day before the Sunday, I would have done it. So if you've seen on social media, that I'm moaning about it and you will fancy just making a small donation. I'll put a link in this video and see if we can match what we raised last year. So I got a letter saying, you're the biggest individual raiser, charity raiser, well done. Okay, so the one that I actually have that felt quite cakey is very bendy anyway. So I'm not gonna try and put it onto the hot fluid. I say fluid because it's just boiling water. Now this one is the one where I made them individually. The first one I did, which I still think is awesome, but that is much more rigid. So we'll stick it on here and see if we can steam it. <laughs> Since that time's passed, couple of minutes, I've just found an actual pizzette or whatever they're called for 55 pounds. That's still an extra 35 more than I spent on that thing. But does anyone want to see a video on homemade ice cream cones? It's very similar. <laughs> Let's see 
if this has worked then. Oh my gosh, that's so hot. It's steam there. Surely this is going to break. Surely. No. Oh. No. Ah. <laughs> uh. It's, it's warm though, look, the syrup's coming out. Let me try it. Oh my gosh. That is sensational. It's the cinnamon, that... Mmm. Wow. Let me, um, let me just have a cold, soft one we had. Oh. That's the way you're supposed to do it, by halving it, but... Mmm. Wow. So this is an original one, and I think the conclusion to this video is you, you, you got to respect the street waffle. That's it. Hashtag respect the street waffle. It's so much effort and work goes into these little beauties. And unless you've got the proper machine like that, you're not going to make it look like that. But flip side of that, flip reverse it like we did. We made it taste absolutely phenomenal. There's a freshness, a sweetness, a cinnamoniness. And the vanilla, there's a little vanilla kick from where we put that in there. That is amazing. I don't know whether I want you to try this. In fact, no. Damn it, I do. Just, that's the whole point of my channel. I want you to learn to like cook anything of any kind, of any place, anywhere. It's amazingly delicious. A lot of work. Respect the Struth Waffle. If you do try it though, do send me a picture. I'd love to see your attempts. Yours probably will look better than mine, but it's awesome. So I'll see you next time. All right. Arrivederci. What is goodbye in Dutch? In Dutch, you would say, farewell. Farewell, oh, farewell. Farewell. Check your level player. No matter what your style, the kitchen's for me. Simon's mustache, goatee, maybe all three. 